Hello everyone, D&D Breakfast Club here. I'm back with part 3 of the Dungeon Draft tutorial. Today I'm going to be talking primarily about objects, how to use them, how to place them, scale them, and manipulate them accordingly. Let's go ahead and jump right in. The last tool on this left hand side is your path tool. I haven't used it much. It has three different tools, the log fence, rails, and rails without tiles. You can use these on different certain maps, mines, I could even maybe put a little fence around this cathedral. Again, I haven't used it much, so I'm not really certain about it, but let's put down a little log fence. Just like your tiles, just like your walls, right click to confirm your selection. When I click and drag a second time, it wants to curve the fence. So instead I'm right clicking to make it cornered off. All right, so we got a little log fence around our cathedral. Keep the animals out. Edit points up here. I want to actually change this log fence's width to be even around the entrance. So each of these selections has a different point. You can click it and move it. And if you make a mistake, you can hit Control Z to undo that. I think I've covered all of the terrain panels, so let's move on to the objects panel. I could do this all day. There's a lot of things to choose from in the object tool. We could be here for hours watching me do this and I don't want to make you suffer with that, so I'm going to go over some of the things you can do. Then I'm going to quickly fast forward this video and you can watch me place things with speed. First of all, the object tool and the scatter tool below are the same objects. There are no different objects in these two tools. It's just how you place them is different. For most objects, you're gonna just use the object tool. The scatter tool is used for different kinds of terrain. For example, uh, trees. Down here under tags, which tags is in both your object tool and your scatter tool, you have different filters. Clicking on these, changes the library panel on the right. On my library panel, if I want just armor, then I click that. If I want just things that I find in a bar, I'll click bar, barrel, and on and on. Or for example, say that I want to use a lot of things in a bar and they have barrels. They might have different kinds of items like chairs, crates, clutter, what I'm doing is I'm holding control and continuing to click. And as I do that, it adds all my tags into my library panel to the right hand side. Down here I might click sacks with control, pillars, lighting, treasure, until you can select as many as you want. Or you can go back to your library, you can click all, you can click used, what's already been used in your map. Let's go ahead and make selections for a cathedral. Administration has some nifty things for a cathedral, I think. Probably gonna have barrels. I pretty much put barrels in everything. They're good scattered terrain. Good uses for different movement. People can hide behind them, pick them up, chuck them, break them. They hide things, they store things. Overall, the barrels in almost every establishment that I make. We won't put beds or blacksmiths. No blood. This is a good church. Don't need boats in here. Don't really need bridges, cage, camp, cart, cave. We'll put chairs, maybe clutter, crates, decor. Desks are gonna be in here. No dining items, maybe dining items, I'll click it. Fixtures, floating as things floating in the water. Food, fountains, graves. We could add a little grave site back behind the church if we wanted. Horses, lighting. Magic because it has different altars, pillars, plants, sacks, stairs, storage, maybe structures, tables, and now I might have too much, but we'll see how our right 
library panel looks right now. So I move to the right and these are all the different things that I might put in my cathedral. Let's go ahead and start with the simple things. I'm looking for benches. Those are shelves. These are kind of neat looking shelves. You can tell there's items on them. Scrolling up. This is a pillar. All right, we've got different kinds of benches, two different kinds of benches right now. Down below in grid and snap, if I unselect snap or click S, I, I'm not locked to the grid. If I hit S, you can see how it skips and it wants to align itself with the grid lines. I'm gonna leave the grid lines on so I can place things, but I'm not gonna free place everything. All right, so I've got my benches down. If I wanted to use scatter tool, let's go ahead and move to our outside terrain, the world around your dungeon, the things that you might see when you're outside of the cathedral. Here, I'm just gonna click trees. These, if I hover over them, something that I found very intuitive and really smart on the developer's part is when you hover over them, it pops up an image in the top left corner of what they are. Also, their size. This is their default size, but it's not actually accurate compared from the library panel to the map. For example, it's so large on this tree, but when I go down here, it's actually not as large as the pop-up. It does give you an example of what might be larger and what might be smaller. So I'm gonna just use these green simple trees. If I wanted to click and hold, and drag around, it's just gonna place these trees. It's rotating them. I don't know if you noticed that, but as it's placing them, it's doing it on a different rotation each time. Since I clicked and dragged, one control Z removes them all. Over here, you have some different sliders. You have these over and under buttons, which works for uh, symbols on symbols. You also have your layer tab here everything defaults to this layer tab but if I wanted to go below water for example if I place it it's now under the fence go back to my default tab here is the rotations you have two sliders and this is the degree to which it rotates your item if both of these sliders are maxed on the left and the right side it's going to rotate it accordingly that's actually the same for scales. If both of these sliders are on the left and right side, it's going to change the sizes randomly and accordingly. For trees, I'm going to go 1.8 from 0.8. And then I'm going to click and drag. That way it's not the same size and it's always changing the rotation. On the left hand side is your spread tab. If you move it all the way to the left, it places things down very quickly and right next to each other. If you move it all the way to the right and you click and hold, it spreads it very sparsely. Let's move it to spread pretty quickly. There's a few things I wanna show you before I do the speed through. And it has to do with your quick key binds for symbols. You probably saw me rotate the bench earlier. You can rotate it, or you can just scroll your mouse wheel. It rotates it in increments of five. Also, maybe this barrel is just way too large for my map. I'm going to hold Alt, scrolling down, and it'll change the size. Same as Alt, scrolling up. Or you can just click the Scale tab. I prefer the Alt. I'm going to unsnap my grid, and I'll see you when this is done.
Well, if you'll notice, I did the one thing I told you that I shouldn't do, which is forget to save. Lost quite a bit of work, so I had to redo it all. Didn't take too long since I already had an idea of what I wanted, and I kind of like the second layout a little better. But, you gotta see it in action that we're still in early access. Save your work, people. This is the first floor of the cathedral. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I will do a basement just to show you some more of the tools. Hey everyone, if you like this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, go ahead and leave a like or a comment. Anything you can do to help support this channel is much appreciated.